Hello ladles and spoons. Here's a question about um, the quantities or output that a rational firm that has market power, such as a monopoly, the quantities or output that they would not produce. It would not be rational for them to produce. Okay, so um, let's start with a downward sloping demand curve or average revenue curve for our firm. And we know that the marginal revenue curve uh, will have double the slope of the average revenue curve. So we'll draw in a marginal revenue curve with double the slope as shown there. Now we can see at this point here the quantity of about three and a half units that marginal revenue falls to zero and thereafter marginal revenue would be negative which is to say you would be taking away from total revenue by producing at those levels. So we can say up to three and a half units quantity, the marginal revenue is positive. We can see it's falling, marginal revenue falls with each additional unit, but it's still positive. It's not zero. At three and a half, it's zero, and thereafter, marginal revenue is negative. You would be taking away from, from the total revenue pile by producing more than three and a half. Okay, so far so good. That means for this range of the demand curve or the average revenue curve of the firm, as price falls, you will be adding to the total revenue. How do we know you'll be adding to total revenue? as price falls, so price is falling, we're moving down the average revenue curve, or the demand curve, price is falling. We know that you're adding to total revenue because marginal revenue, which means the additional revenue from each unit sold, marginal revenue is positive. You must be adding to your total revenue. However, after that point, as price continues to fall, beyond this point, price continues to fall, you'll be taking away from your total revenue. How do we know that? Because the marginal revenue curve is below zero, below the horizontal axis. Marginal revenue is negative, meaning you're taking away from total revenue. Okay, so far so good. Now, if you look in your textbook, under the section on the total revenue test, you'll find that when price falls, but total revenue increases, you're adding to total revenue, then we say that demand must be price elastic. Demand is relatively responsive to a ch the quantity demanded is relatively responsive to a change in price. When price falls and the quantity demanded, sorry, when price falls and total revenue increases, demand must be price elastic. And we know over this top half of the demand curve, when price falls, marginal revenue is positive, so total revenue must be rising. Price falls, total revenue rises, demand is price elastic. In the second half, the lower range of the demand curve, however, we know that when price falls, we're in the area where, or the range where the marginal revenue is negative, we're taking away from marginal revenue, from, we're taking away from total revenue. When price falls, total revenue falls. We know in that case that demand is relatively price inelastic. So in the top half, the first half of the 
the top half of the demand curve or the average revenue curve. Demand is price elastic. In the lower half range of the demand curve, we know that it's price inelastic. All right, that's our next step. By the way, what about at the point in between? We've gone from price elastic, price elastic, price in elastic to price inelastic. Price elasticity of demand greater than one in absolute terms to price elasticity of demand coefficient less than one in absolute terms. We must have gone through the point one there. So at that midpoint on the demand curve, assuming it's a straight line, by the way, this is assuming we're dealing with a straight line demand curve. The midpoint, the price elasticity of demand coefficient must have been one in absolute terms. So we would say at this point, demand is unit price elastic. Okay, so far so good. Next step. So we've got the, this range, the top half of the demand curve is price elastic and the bottom half is price inelastic. And we've got our marginal revenue curve, downward sloping, double the slope of the average revenue curve. It cuts the, ver the horizontal axis at around about three and a half units of quantity and thereafter goes negative. All right, now, what would be, what's our rule for the optimal output for a firm? If you remember, the rule for the optimal output for a firm is, for a rational, for a rational firm, is where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost, the last unit produced. So what we need to find the optimal output for our firm is a marginal cost curve to find the point of intersection between the marginal cost curve and the marginal revenue curve. So let's draw in a standard marginal cost curve. There we go. Where's the optimal output? Well, it's determined by the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, here. Okay. Note that the firm is producing at a level within the range of the price, the, the price elastic range of the demand curve. But let's move the marginal cost curve to check whether that's true always. So let's put it here. Optimal output is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Again, it's in the elastic range of the demand curve. Let's move it down a bit further. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Again, in the elastic portion of the demand curve. How could we get it into the inelastic portion? Well, let's put the marginal cost curve down here so we can get the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And now, where we would be producing in the range uh, covered by the price inelastic portion of the demand curve. But that's conceptually ridiculous, isn't it? Because what's got to have happened to the marginal cost? Marginal cost would have had to have been in this range, would have had to have been negative. And it's below zero. Marginal cost is negative, which would imply something extremely strange because it means for example, the firm has employed additional workers. Uh, normally, your cost, marginal cost, might have gone up or at least be positive because you had to employ additional workers and you had to pay the additional workers. But if marginal costs are negative, that would imply that when you employed additional workers, the firm paid, the firm was paid, received money, was paid by the workers to work. So you go to you go to work and uh, you pay your boss for the privilege of working. 
not for wages, which seems a bit mad. So we that that's conceptually, in economic terms, is ridiculous. So we would rule out that possibility. So that scenario we just that we can see there, just wouldn't apply. It's although graphically we can see it existing. Economically, it makes no sense. So we can say that our firm will definitely produce at quantities in the elastic portion or the elastic range of our demand curve but will not produce in the inelastic part of the demand curve. Fascinating I know that'll do for that. There's another question which is related to firms with market power such as a monopoly and it's a question of the relationship between the price of a good produced by a monopoly and the marginal revenue and we might ask the question um, is the price higher or lower than marginal revenue so let's look at our demand curve or average revenue curve we've got a marginal revenue curve double the slope of the average revenue curve we've got a standard marginal cost curve we can now say well, where's the optimal output for our firm it's at the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost and we can see that the price that consumers are willing to pay for that output is four dollars that's the price What's the marginal revenue earned by the firm at that price, at that output, sorry? Well, we can see it there, marginal revenue there, cuts the marginal revenue curve at this point here. So we can see that the marginal revenue is $2. Clearly, the price is greater than the marginal revenue and even if you moved this marginal cost curve around you moved it over to here that same principle would apply or if you shifted the marginal cost curve back up to here that same pattern would apply the distance between the price and the average revenue might become narrower or might become greater but the fact that there is a gap between them, that the price is higher than the marginal revenue, is inevitable because the, the demand curve, which is effectively a price curve, is always higher than the marginal revenue curve. And incidentally, we also know that the firm will never produce beyond around about three and a half units because we can see at that point where the marginal revenue curve falls to or cuts the horizontal axis. We now know from the previous question that the firms wouldn't produce the firm wouldn't produce beyond that output level. Okay. So that is that.